Well, hello everybody. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, which means it's time for a Facebook Live video tutorial. So, let me get a uh, check over here on the left and make sure that I'm transmittalating, because otherwise, you know, I'm... Well, I just went completely wonko over here. We don't want to do that. I was reading a really good idea about my 31 upline. She's donating... She's uh, sending care packages to frontline workers at the uh, at the local healthcare facility. So I was just reading how to do that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll work that out, and we can uh, send some care packages to some folks who deserve it. Okay, it looks like I am actually transmitting, and I see a couple of folks on. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll. Um, we're gonna make a fun card tonight, I think. I do believe you'll like it. I hope you'll like it. Let me let me rephrase that. Hey, Kathy. So this is a card. Um, one of my friends is pregnant and going to be having a baby in August. So uh, it'll be baby number two. It's my ginger family. So I'll be excited to see uh, who joins Nehemiah in that family. So I decided I would go ahead and start getting some cards together. And I used the Wildly Happy stamp set. And this is from the 2019-2020 um, annual catalog. Hi, Faith. You're getting some rain. That's awesome. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Nance. Hi, uh, Kathy and Mary and everybody. I appreciate y'all joining me today. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, this is the stamp set. And it's kind of, it's pretty cute. It's got bunnies and foxes and pandas and elephants. Um to welcome a baby to the world and so so I kind of like it this is actually going to be the paper players challenge this week it's a theme challenge and the challenge is at the zoo so I think it fits pretty good hi Catherine from British Columbia appreciate you hi Jean hi Pam appreciate y'all joining okay this one is super super easy uh, it uses some die cuts. We're going to show you that. The uh, background here, the card front is with the tufted 3D embossing folder, which is fun and I think really fun on a baby card. And we've got the Stitch So Sweetly dies. The uh, middle layer here is with the next to largest tri rectangle, one of my faves. The artwork is from Stitched uh, Shapes, and it is the next to largest square. And then finally, this uh, pretty uh, granny apple green die cut is the what I think is going to end up being a real workhorse. I've used this a bunch now already, and it's only been out for like a week. Hey, Amy. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Lenny. Appreciate you joining. Hey, Robbie. Appreciate you joining me tonight. Um, you know, what is it? Day 506 of the self isolation? Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, this is the die set that I, the die that I used for this little layer. Once you get all the layers cut out, it's really just a matter of some coloring and some gluing. And you know, we're pretty good at that, right? Okay. So let's get started. All of these will be on my blog tomorrow. So you do not need to make any notes about sizes or anything like that. I've got, uh, this is one of my favorite color combos, have to, have to tell you. <laughs> Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, and White. Done. Really, really like it. Now, if you, this is a pretty gender neutral card. If you wanted to make a baby card, uh, a baby card. Hmm, yes. If you wanted to make a girl card or a boy card, you could obviously just change up your color schemes. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Karen. Waiting for those dies to ship. Yeah, it's a pretty fun die set, not going to lie. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Let's stop yakking, Mary, and get started, for goodness sake, girl. My goodness. Okay, so we're going to start with a piece of Whisper White. Now, here's a tip. This is a really important tip, and I know this because I've tried to do it other ways. Hi, Vicki. Uh, if you are going to stamp on a panel that is embossed, stamp the panel first. Just saying, because if you try to stamp the embossed panel, depending on which embossing folder it is, it can be very, very difficult to get a good image. So I'm just throwing that out there from personal experience. Okay, so we are going to use this little die right here, this little stamp. Now here's a trick. It helps if you die cut the other pieces first so that you can do a dry fit because it's all kind of uh, close. There's not a whole lot of extra space on the card, right? 
and it would be very easy to put your stamp in a place. See how much room I've got? That's it. So you need to be doing a little bit of a dry fit ahead so that you can make sure that you're going to have room for your sentiment and then for all your layers. Some of you may recognize this sketch. It's for the um, this week's case, this sketch. So that's about where I'm going to put it. And yes, I know I moved it, and you'd think that would completely ruin the entire effect. All right, which die set? Um, okay, I'm assuming you mean this one. This is the Ornate Layers dies. This is in the new Ornate Garden suite, and you can get it as part either on its own or as part of the suite, and until the 15th of April, you can actually buy my special bundle and save about... 15 to 20 percent on the price that you would pay if you bought it yourself um, and that includes tax and shipping so it's 124 dollars for the whole suite you get the uh, ribbon pack for free and again it direct ships and that includes tax and shipping so there you go ornate garden suite and this is the ornate layers die set okay so i'm gonna just stamp that in garden uh, granny apple green and i would like it to be straight straight would be good Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to hold it a beat so we make sure we get a nice image. Maybe a little crookedy. It's a baby card. The baby can't tell. Correct, Amy. You can if you use the Stamparatus, but I can't even tell you. I, I, I never remember to do that. I always think, oh, I've got this. Usually because I'm I'm designing as I go, and so I'll be like, oh, yeah, that looks really good, except wouldn't that be cool if I put the sentiment out here? after I've already embossed it. So now I'm gonna go off off camera for just a minute and I'm going to emboss this in the tufted 3D embossing folder. And I don't think you need to see me do that because it's embossing. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Nance, if you're interested in that, uh, if you are interested in that suite, take a look on my blog post, you'll see it. Um, advertised and it's very easy to get it ordered but it's only good through the 15th I'll take that special off the blog on the 15th okay and so here's how it looks once it get, em get embossed once I get it embossed there's how it looks and now I'm going to liquid glueify it to my one of my daffodil delight panels hi Julie hi Tish hi Carol appreciate it Hi, Virginia. So guys, just so you know, if I don't say hello to you, it's because I've missed you saying hello to me because the comments scroll away from my screen whilst I am looking away. And sometimes I have to concentrate really hard to do things like, you know, line up cardstock on cardstock. Because I don't know about you, but it just bugs the heck out of me when I get it on crooked. And so it really helps me to get it on straight the first time. Just throwing that out there. Okay, and now watch how easy this is. Now we're just going to uh, layer these on. These are, oh, careful. This is, um, this is Granny Apple Green, and this is in the Bright 6x6 six six DSP, which is a... Uh, you got your brights, your regals, subtles, neutrals, and then you've got the in colors as well. Okay, so we're just going to adhere that like so, like so. And then I used the little scripty design in Daffodil Delight. It's also in the brights, obviously, since Daffodil Delight is a bright. Hi, Anne, appreciate you. Hi, Lynn from New Jersey. How are you? Hi, Carol. Uh, hey, Janet and Bill, appreciate you joining. All right, and we're just, you know, this is a very technical lining up right here. It's very critical that you get it exactly correct, by which I mean not critical at all. Just make it look right. There. Okay, now I'm going to cover that up. And I have, before you came, I stamped the adorable, wildly happy um, elephant family in gray granite on a piece of whisper white and then i cut it with that next to largest square out of the stitched shapes dies that is not easy to say i'm just gonna tell you that okay now i am going does that mean we can talk about her and she'll never know no i know all i see all because i go back and look at all the comments so you know 
I'll figure it out at some point. So this is the gray granite blends combo, and I'm going to do my normal, highly artistic job, um, starting by flooding with gray, the light, the light blend. And hopefully Sue isn't watching because she would just be shuddering at my lack of skill here, but you know, it's an elephant, it's gray. Okay, you know, they're not like real flashy dudes. Now, I guess I could have given her some lovely lipstick nail polish, but that would have been disgusting. Okay, so now I've got some of it going. I'm going to come back with my dark, put some dark where I think there would be shadows, like in there. And then we'll come back and blend, 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 blend. That's why they call them blends, you know, because of blend, 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 blend. Okay. And I usually use regular cardstock for this, but some people prefer when they're doing a big blend or watercoloring to use either watercolor paper or shimmer white. Whisper white, shimmer, shimmery whisper white is what I'm attempting to get out of my mouth. Do you hear the words coming out of my mouth? Okay. Let me get this done here. You'll be glad to know that I have pre-colored the other image, so you won't have to watch me do this twice. See, Rosie, get her under control, please. <sighs> Carol, do not encourage her. She does not need encouragement. She is already just so silly. So silly. Okay. And there's Mama pretty much getting done. She'd have a darker leg back there, I'm pretty sure. Okay, now we'll get the baby going. Same way, only much smaller, much smaller, much more little. Is there anything cuter, really? The only thing cuter than a baby elephant is a baby giraffe. If I could have an exotic animal, I would absolutely have a giraffe. Right in my backyard. I'm pretty sure there's a code against it. But I've got 30 acres. Who would ever know? I mean, really. Who would ever know? Well, I'm, maybe somebody would know. Somebody would probably know. And then they'd call the sheriff, and he'd come strolling up the driveway to see if, in fact, the crazy person who called and said, those people have a giraffe in their yard, whether they were accurate or not. And then they would see him, and they'd be like, oh, you can't have a giraffe in the confines of Fayette County? No. And I'd be like, but he's so cute. All right, there's Mr. Baby done. So see how easy, I mean serious, come on, sloth. There you go. See Karen? Well, and when I had my big guy who was a pinto, brown and white, nobody would have ever known. I'd have gone like, no, that is a national show horse right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna put some dimensionals, you knew I would, on the back of that. And we'll get him popped on. And then we're gonna add a glitter enamel dot and a bow. And that's it. How easy is that? I love it when the tools do the work and the very adorable art takes care of all of my work. Yes. Oh, please, we need a little laugh or we will cry. Yes. No, let's not cry. It's so easy to cry. It's so easy to cry. I've really started trying to stay away from the news entirely. Because uh, truly, if it's not about people dying and being deathly ill, it's about them being kicked out of their homes and not having any money. So it's really kind of bad news all the way around. All right, let's go ahead and pop him on. And then I'm gonna use my bow easy and make us a little bow with this pretty Daffodil Delight quarter inch ruched, ruched, ruched ribbon. Ruched ribbon. You are the self-appointed giraffe police. <laughs> no, Jewel, I do not know why you lose sound when you turn landscape, unless you're inadvertently hitting the mute button. I, I mean, that doesn't really seem I don't know why that would be. Amy, you got any ideas on that one? Other than Facebook is weird, which is a known thing. 
I didn't even have to see that on, on the internet. I can tell you that Facebook does weird stuff all the time. Now look at that. How many people do you know can bork a ribbon with a bow easy? I mean, serious? <sighs> Itty bitty lion and tiger cubs. Yes, they are. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Appreciate you joining tonight. It was nice talking to you last week. See what I did there is I screwed up this ro this bow because I was getting all excited about giraffes and stuff like that. So I had to take it apart and do it again. I had to take it apart and did a den. Did a den. Oh my goodness. Have you ever heard the term the perversity of an inanimate object? Which is funny because, you know, inanimate things really shouldn't be able to be perverse, but they really truly can when they want to be. Truly can when they want to be. Okay, that's gonna, that is already better. Okay. Okay, we'll get that just tightened up. Remember when you use a bow easy, the side you're working on is the back of the bow. And by working on a bow easy, I mean any of the bow tying devices, I believe, work exactly the same way. Okay, we'll pull this off. Hey, Sue, I had problems too until my friend Sue Prather showed us how to do it. And even after that, I just had to do it and do it. And I read that I kept looking at the directions. So I had somebody show me how to do it, Sue. And then I could read the directions and think to what she had shown. But it still wasn't easy. It's like driving a stick. It's really hard right up until it isn't. And once it isn't, then it's easy, right? So just keep practicing. I'm going to use a glue dot. See how handy that was? It was actually where it was supposed to be. And I'm just going to put that right there in the corner. Trim off my ends. And then use... I'm pushing enough in the cart to make it worthwhile and everything that I think I need is unavailable. Oh man, I hate when that happens. Ah! A bow of jig. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. A boa majig. I like it. Okay, we're just going to use this smallest granny apple green enamel dot, and it's going to go right there. And that is our card front. Easy peasy. Yeah? Oh, that little bow turned out perfect. Y'all, bow easy. Amazon. I'm pretty sure I got it at Amazon. Yeah. And it's it is easy once you get it down. It is not intuitive it isn't like you pull it out of the package and go Bleh, and make a bow it just isn't <laughs> but it is easy once you figure it out all right on the inside we're going to just use the uh, another little sentiment in granny apple green maybe one day we should have a bow easy maybe we should do that at the end of this if we have time we could make a we could do bow easies bows easy ish all right so we're just going to put this in granny apple green in the middle of our whisper white panel and then i have a piece uh, let's see let's go ahead and put it on our mat put it on our mat all right Like I said, you'll be glad to know I've already colored the other elephant. Boy, I'm ready for the pollen to be gone every time I think it is. It's like really clear outside, and so it looks like it ought to be gone. And then you look online, and it says 1,700, extremely high. In what? Pine. Yep. Sure. Why not? Okay. Now, I have just a little strip of uh, Daffodil Delight, and it's the same width as my mat, so it's four inches, and it is three quarters of an inch wide. And we'll go ahead and just adhere this right at the bottom of the mat. This is kind of an old school way to finish, and it's fun every once in a while versus stamping another image in here. And then uh, an eighth of an inch smaller, but still four inches long. So five eighths of an inch wide and four inches long. 
and split the difference there. Just line it up with your Mark 1 eyeball. There we go. Now, if you didn't want to do it like that where you cut it exactly and had to get it lined up, you could make it extra long and just line up one edge, put it on, and then turn it and snip, and you'd be done. Same difference, just whichever is easier for you. And now we're going to put this in a granny apple green card base. I really, 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 really love this color combination. I love granny apple green. I hope it is here for a really long time. Really long time. I like it better than lemon lime twist, and I like lemon lime twist a lot. All right. I might actually wear leggings made of this color. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hope I won't, Amy? Okay, now we're going to pop our front on with some dimensional nails. Some dimensional nails. Some dimensional nails. And then we are nearly done ske. Done ske. Okay. We went out today to, to uh, drop a couple of things at the post office, and there's a whole bunch of signs in Tyrone every every 30 feet or so with the how to avoid COVID-19 and things to do, and it's like, good Lord, you just can't escape it. It's craziness, craziness. Okay. You, you know that, that's the, do I take, uh, have I taken off the dimensional cover tap? Okay. And we'll make sure we're straight and front ways up, backwards and forwards. And there we go. Fun, right? Okay, now let's see, where's my envelope? And before you got here, I, re I stamped the image again and colored him exactly the same way as I did the card front. And so we're gonna put some of that scripty daffodil delight on. Just so you know, be sure you put it on, you know, like right side up because it does have an up and a down. Uh, I mean, you know, unless you wanna, you know, have you ever seen that thing on, on Facebook where the words are all upside down and it says only 1% of the universe can read this. If you are one of them, you are a genius. Yeah, come on, man. Anybody can read that. Anybody can read that. So, you know, maybe it's like a test. You wanna give them a test. A little test. And we'll just put that. <laughs> I did have to just check, like, okay, now that you're yakking about it, do you have it on right side up? And the answer is yes, indeed, I do. Yes, indeed, I do. I do, I do. Can't emeritus. What? Can't emeritus to see you in these. I think you've been autocorrected, Amy. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Maybe read back through the comments and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> At least Granny Apple isn't an in color. Yes, that is correct. Hopefully it will stay around for a really long time. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like it. Facebook is nuts. <laughs> Alrighty. What would you guys think? How many of you think you could do Zoom? Anybody? Just everybody take a look at Zoom. Zoom is a really easy way to do video chatting. I was thinking about maybe, what if we did like a, a card class online? And we could, it could, well, I'll figure out how it would work, but we would all be on Zoom and we could all make a card together. What do you think about that? Would that be a good idea? So just think it through and figure it out. You'd have to put makeup on. No, it would be a no makeup zone because then if you put makeup on, then I have to put makeup on. And we just all have to agree. It would be like a pinky swear that, I can't even do that, a pinky swear that nobody wears their makeup and nobody makes an effort with their hair. And you can even come in pajamas if you want. So. Just think that through, and if you can do it, that would be awesome. I think it would be fun. Okay, so there is the card. Anybody want to see the bow easy? 
give me some thumbs up or some smiles or whatever. And if we'll, if you do, we'll do a quick bow easy demo. And if not, we'll call it a night. Kathy, I am sure you look beautiful all the time. Okay, I'm getting thumbs up. So let's do a bow easy. Okay, this is a bow easy. Whoa. Here, they have, all of these little tabs are different sizes of bows, okay? Obviously, this one is huge. This is the size of the loop, so that would be really big. This would be really small. This would be even smaller. And I can tell you, you could probably use any tab for any size ribbon, but for example, if you use this big old petal pink um, organdy ribbon, it would be really hard to make a bow on this little tiny doohickey. Just saying. It could be done, but you, you got to have better fingers than I do. So I like to use my card and try to kind of determine what size bow I want on the front of my card. So like obviously that would be pretty too much huge. This would be too little. That would be about right. That would be too little. So let's go ahead and use this one. What you do is, and now this is right-handed directions. I cannot... I cannot translate if you are a lefty. I am sorry, I cannot. That is just beyond me completely. Which one did I say I was using? I think I said I was using this one. Okay, so holding the bow easy in your left hand, take the end of your ribbon and put it three or four inches from the left edge, okay? Wrap around both tabs like so. If you do that one time, you're going to get a one loop bow. If you went again, then you'd get two loops. So you'd end up with two loops here and single tails. Okay, so loop, 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 and single tails. Okay, that becomes a little more of a finger dexterity exercise. So we are going to crawl first, which is this. In fact, that's all we're going to do today because if I attempt to do a double <laughs> loop bow on here, I will bork it. Okay, so wrapped around and then give yourself three or four inches out here. I tend to overcompensate because if you have a little more ribbon over here, it is easier. Okay, cut that off. Okay, watch. Can everybody see? Okay. You're going to bring that end that you just cut and you're going to go down through the gap between the ribbon and the top of the bow easy loop. Okay. Yes. Also, it helps if you make that pointy, which I didn't do a very good job of. Okay. So pull it through. Try to keep all of the ribbon straight as it's going. Then you're going to come back up through the gap like that. And this is really important. You have to take the end of the, of the ribbon back through the loop in the same direction that it was going. Okay, so you remember you wrap this way, you have to go back through in the same direction you were going. If you try to come this way, you won't make a bow. Okay, so go back through like that and keep this, this, this knot that is now closing, keep it in the gap there. Okay. Now, keep your thumb on it so you're holding it snug, and then snug that knot up. Leave it on the bow easy while you mess with it and get it straight and doing what you want it to do, okay? It's a lot easier, because this is kind of like a wonky bow, and it pulls sometimes and doesn't pull other times, okay? Now remember, this is the front, this is the back. The side you are working with is the back. Once you think everything is looking good, go ahead and slide it off. And then you can kind of straighten everything out and fluff up your loops. And there you go. Pretty good bow pretty much every time. Some ribbons are easier than others, obviously. Um, I'm not a very big fan of the little bows that you get with this uh, real thin stuff. The, what is this? It's like an eighth of an inch. To me, the bows look really um, too straight. Like really straight looking. I don't like how they look. 
but it's the same idea. So three or four inches off the left side, come back around, hold the bow, the loop there, cut an end on a, on a point if you can, go down between the ribbon and the top of the bow easy slot, go down, <laughs> Perversity of an inanimate object at work. Okay. And then come back through the slot and then go through the loop in the same direction you were going. And then pull everything snug while you're holding it on the bow easy. It could be a left-handed doohickey problem. Um, I'm pretty sure it's probably not the first time you've had a problem with with left-handed things, being left-handed in a right-handed world, right? Okay, so we just snug that up before you get everything off of there. And try to get it, see it? I just don't like how this really thin ribbon makes bows. It's not, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan. Even when you get done with it and you play with it, it's still kind of a funky looking bow, I think. But it's the same concept, so it's easy to see that you don't want to make that bow. That's going in the round five. Okay, did everybody get it? <laughs> now you're an official genius on the bow easy, of course. Just go practice it. I promise you will get it. I promise if I can get this, <laughs> you can get this. Okay? All right, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Take a look at the Ornate Garden Suite special bundle that I've got. It's only good through the 15th, which is coming soon to a calendar near you. And I will see you guys. Oh, I wanted to tell you on Wednesday, I'm going to be in a new blog hop. It's called Around the World on Wednesday. And um, I'll go live at six in the morning. And I think you'll see a lot of really cool projects. So I hope you'll come back. Obviously, I hope you'll come back even if you don't care about the blog hop. But I hope you will. And then on Thursday, we'll do another live on YouTube. All right, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.